Hello everybody, my name is Ed, and welcome to a different kind of video from the usual gaming content. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys three easy audio tricks that you guys can use to make your audio sound way better in your videos. Before we start, I've got a quick little bonus tip for you guys. If you guys are ever doing a little bit to camera like this, or you're perhaps a vlogger, and you're using a camera like this that's got itself a viewfinder, you're gonna have to look at it to try and set up your shot, and that's fine. But the second you've stopped setting up your shot, turn this back around and look down the lens because it's incredibly distracting to be having someone talking to you like this. It's the difference between looking down the lens and talking to you like this. This is not direct eye contact and it's weird. If you spoke to a mate like this or to your mother or your father, this would be strange. Look down the lens, connect with people. It's a lot nicer. There's a little bonus for you. Anyway, let's move on to our three tips. So the three things we're going to be covering today are crossfading, compression or dynamics processing, and finally, denoising. We're going to go through each one individually and discuss what they all mean, but that's the overview of what we're going to be doing. They're very, very simple tricks that a lot of people have probably already heard, so this isn't for you if you already know what these things are, but these are things that over the time that I've been watching YouTube videos and the time that I've been editing videos, the things that I notice a lot of people don't do, and it really is the key to making your video sound a lot better. Even some of the bigger YouTubers don't do some of these, and I wish they did because it would improve their quality so much. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is crossfading. Now, crossfading is the idea of fading one bit of audio down as you fade another bit of audio up. Now, that sounds really fiddly, but it's actually not. You can do this with the press of a single button. Well, a combination of three buttons, but it's very, very easy. The reason you want to do this is because if you've got an audio file that you've cut up, say a bit of music, and you let it jump between it, there's a popping sound and it's a very jarring sensation. So applying a crossfade just naturally blends between the two clips without you having to do anything and without anybody noticing. It's very subtle. By the way, we're going to jump into Premiere after I've explained all of these effects and then I'm going to show you what applying these actually does to your audio. So don't worry, I'll take you through it step by step. Crossfading is really important because when you've got a voiceover where you're cutting something off or where you've got music that you're cutting between in a let's play, it's very important that you make that subtle and you'll notice a lot of big channels do don't do it. A lot of big vloggers don't do it. Some big Let's Play channels just allow a horrible pop between some of their gameplay. It's quite jarring, and just applying a little one of these will be magic. So I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. The second thing we're going to be talking about is compression or dynamics processing. Now, basically, the simplified version of this is you're squashing the sound. So if you've got a bit of volume that goes from very, very quiet to very, very loud, you're basically trying to make that all the same volume. You've got a number of different things that you have to set in a compressor. So you've got your thing called your threshold, which is your volume, where you'll try and cap the volume. This, trust me, I'll show you all this because I know it sounds complicated. I'm just going to walk you through it now. You then have a thing called a ratio, which is by how much over. Oh, this is going to start getting complicated, isn't it? Compression's a little bit funny. When I show you how it works, you'll probably understand it a bit better. Basically, you set a volume level, you set a certain ratio, which is by how much you're compressing it. And once you've done that, you turn the whole thing up. So that's what you're doing. You're squashing it down and then turning it up. But I'll show you that in practice. But it's very, very handy. If you've got a vocal thing going on, like a voiceover in a let's play, this is hugely important because if you're going from very, very quiet and whispering in a quiet moment to very loud and screaming, it just levels it all off and stops people from suddenly having you screaming in their ears. And it's very, very handy. And again, a lot of people don't do this. A lot of the very big people. And if they did, their audio quality would be beautiful. The third and final thing which I'm going to show you, which isn't necessarily so important, but is something that most videos could use, is something called a denoiser. Now, what that does is literally what it sounds like. It turns down the horrible S sound that you'll probably be getting in some of your recordings. And it, depending on how hard you use it, you may get some weird distortion effects on your voice. So you don't want to use it too strongly. But I'll walk you through how to use that in Adobe Premiere Pro. By the way, I do use Adobe Premiere Pro as my video editing software. So what we're going to be doing is jumping into Premiere Pro and I'll be applying all of these effects to another bit of footage to show you exactly what that does. Now, this isn't going to be a Final Cut Pro tutorial either. So if you guys do want to see any of that, I'm afraid I can't be showing it to you, but you can take what you learn from this and apply it to the effects that are on other programs. So you may just have to fiddle with your own versions of what the plugins are, but the theory is basically the same. And the, you know, the points still stand of crossfading, compression and denoising. You should do that across all your videos. Anyway, let's dive into Premiere Pro and I'll show you how it all works. Okay, so here I've got myself my Premiere Pro timeline. And basically it's just a little clip of Destiny 2 that I did for a video for game. And basically I've got myself a voice role here, which is all of my voice track audio. So if I play hey, this, look, we're not alone up here. 
This is cool. Oh my god, this is the tower. So something you'll notice is that the volume goes from being quite low to then quite high, especially around here where it peaks. So listen here, for instance. So bleak. Acid bath! See, that just goes from here to here, and that's mental. So what we're going to be doing is basically making it all sit around here, and that's just going to make everything sound a lot more nice and a lot more level. So the first thing I'm going to show you is crossfading. So for instance, if I make a cut here and then make a cut here, this bit of music that's playing all the way through here is now going to have a break in it. So let's just listen to how that sounds. See, there's a slightly weird jump in it now because... You're jumping between two bits that don't work. So all you have to do in Adobe Premiere Pro, let's just zoom in on here so we can see what it's doing. You select both of the clips that you're gonna be doing and you simply press Control Shift D. And what that does is it applies what you have as your default transition. There is another way of doing this, the more manual way. I'll show you how you do that so that you can set your own default one. So you go to effects, which I've got set here. You may have that set somewhere else in your Premiere Pro timeline, but I'm weird and have it set here. You go to audio transitions, crossfade, and then choose exponential power. Constant gain and exponential fade are both fine, but basically the way they work is they fade it at a different speed. This is just a nice smooth fade, and that's what you want to do. So it's as simple as dragging that onto there. And there you go, you've got yourself a crossfade. And now that sounds like this. See, it's not a huge change because you are still jumping between two bits of stuff, but it's a nice smooth transition. And so that's the easy way of crossfading. So when you press Control shift d that applies your default transition. And if you want to apply which one of these three is your default transition, which should already be constant power, you simply right click and click set select as default transition. It's very, very simple. And basically you could actually set how fast this is because you can still manipulate the speed of, oh God, sorry. You can actually manipulate the speed of these. So you can make that go a bit slower which is a bit, a, a lot smoother because it fades in and fades out earlier. Or you can make it very, very quick, which for a voiceover is what I advise doing. Basically, if you want to change the duration of your default transition, you simply go to preferences and go to timeline. Now, what this will do is bring this window up and here you've got video transition default duration, which is across dissolve of video, which we're not worried about, and audio transition default duration, which I've set to 10 frames. Now, the normal one is 25, which is a bit slower, but I've put it to 10 because 10 is a nice middle ground. You could put that to whatever you want but i tend to find that 10 is a nice quick but not too quick transition so i set it to that an extra little bonus tip if you also want to apply a transition to two bits of video instead of pressing Control shift d press Control d that'll now do a cross dissolve between those just like that so that's all you really need to know about crossfading because it even brings a bit of audio nicely to an Get end out of my way! See? So that's all we really need to know about crossfading. So now I'm going to teach you one of the harder ones, which is compression. So basically, we're actually going to be using something called the obsolete audio effects. Now, some of you who may be using older versions of Adobe may just have these as the regular things. But people who are using CC, avoid using the dynamics processing here because it's just very hard to use and it actually doesn't sound very good. So we're going to use what they consider to be the obsolete dynamics. Now, Let's listen again to what my vocal sounds like when it's uncompressed. This is so bleak. Acid bath! Help me! It goes from very quiet to very loud. So here are all the different things that I was telling you about. The only three we're going to have to worry about are threshold, ratio, and makeup. So basically what threshold is, is you're setting the level at which the compressor needs to kick in. So basically what you want is you want this to be floating at around eight decibels, which is here. So if we just play back the audio, so bleak. Acid bath. we're barely tickling there. So I'm gonna have to bring this down a lot. Usually I know that my voice is around 28 decibels or minus 28 decibels. So I can kind of guess that I'll be around here. Bleak. Acid bath, help me. Oh quick, get inside the bubble. It's around there. I'm gonna bring it down to 30 just because then it'll Acid be a, a bit better. Help me. Oh, quick, get inside the bubble. Okay, there we go. So basically, now that it's set where the compressor is going to kick in, we need to set how much it's going to compress with the ratio. At the moment, it's set to very, very low. So literally, all I do is slam it up to high. Now, some of you who may be audio engineers may be thinking, whoa, that's a bit overkill. Yeah, it might be, but actually, I find it tends to work. And if you combine this with a denoiser, it gets rid of some of the horrible background noise. You may have to tweak with your own threshold. And obviously, you want your microphone to be within a kind of spread hand distance of your mouth maybe a little bit closer you know it you don't want it too close otherwise you get a lot of popping sounds from your mouth from p and b syllables but you basically want to be having this floating there and compressing quite a lot so the problem is now is it's very very quiet because we've compressed it at minus 30 decibels 
Help me. But you can hear now that everything's level. So all we're going to do now is we're going to turn it up using the makeup. This is so bleak. Acid bath. Help me. And there we go. That is now at the perfect volume. Now, this is an extra little trick that will stop your audio from doing what's called peaking. This is when it goes too loud and distorts. Built into the compressor is something called a limiter. Now, all you want to do with this is click the limiter button and then turn the threshold all the way up to zero. Now, what that does is it literally just stops any volume from going above zero, which is the loudest anything can go. So basically, it can't distort, which is absolutely brilliant. Now, basically, our voice sounds like this. Acid bath! Help me! Oh, quick, get inside the bubble. Whoa! You'll notice now that everything is just completely level. The bits where I was quiet, the bits where I'm loud, they all sound exactly the same. And especially when you've got volume going on from gameplay, that's going to help a lot. The load up here! It's been totally and utterly decimated. This is so bleak. Acid bath! See, you can still hear the louder bits because obviously that's recorded slightly differently. So basically you can hear the quiet bits a lot louder and the louder bits have been squashed to a nicer volume. And basically we need to take this concept of limiting and apply that to our output so the video isn't distorting. Now this is the one time I do actually recommend just using the default one here. This You could just apply the hard limiter. And then there, that's already set. You don't have to do anything to that. The way of doing that with our obsolete one is by just going into dynamics, turning off the compressor, turning the limiter on and turning that to zero. And there you go. You've got yourself a limited output. So the final thing we're going to discuss is denoising. Now, denoising is basically the idea of taking any background hiss, which will probably be introduced via the compression and getting rid of it. So here's how my voice now sounds. It's been totally and utterly decimated. This is Those of you with headphones might be able to hear that there is some hiss. You might not be able to hear that if you don't. It's so but there bleak. Acid bath! Help me! But there is some background interference there. So basically, all we need to do is go back into effects up on our audio track mixer. All we do is go to the obsolete audio effects, go to denoiser, and basically it'll bring up this window. And all we need to do... Oh, quick, get inside the bubble! ...is turn down... Basically, I turn down for what? <laughs> I turned down to about minus seven decibels, which is uh, uh, quite hard, but it works for me. Help me! Oh, quick, get inside the bubble! Whoa! You'll now notice there is no hiss, so that's exactly what you need to do. Some of you may find this quite destructive on your voice, so you may need to play with it a little bit. You typically won't need to fiddle with offset, and reduction, you can just fiddle anywhere between kind of three decibels and seven decibels should be enough for you. So there you go, guys. Those are my three basic tips to how to improve your audio in your videos. If you guys did find this helpful, please do leave me a comment down there and be sure to like the video as well. If you've got any questions about how to apply any of these or any other effects that you want to know about, do leave me a comment down there. I'm very happy to help. I've basically noticed all of these things while watching other people's videos, whether they're big YouTubers, whether they're small. So these are mistakes that people do make across the board, and sometimes I forget to do them myself, so I'm guilty of doing it myself. But if you do apply all of these rules to your videos, I promise you your audio will sound so much better and you'll feel a lot happier with the result as well. So guys, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next tutorial video, I guess. Take care. Bye -sies.